Sorry to My Hair Academia, Season 7, Episode 11. I have no interest in this path towards progress you speak of. Not interested in hearing about your personal journey, yeah. <laughs> Seeing Bakugo get ragdolled is upsetting. Is he really this far beyond my level? Yes, but that's not the end of the story. If there's a single thing I'm interested in when it comes to you... It's him, <laughs> your friend. There's a time where that would have really stung. That time is not now. Now it's a mistake, it feels like, to me. Oh, there he is on his way. And one for all. Of course, there's a time where that would have been devastating to hear. I mean, even now, there are some really upsetting things about it. One of them is that if not for Deku, in that moment, Shigaraki probably just kills him, right? But as far as character growth is concerned, it's it feels somewhat obvious to me, or at least it's my deep feeling, that this is a mistake. This whole monologue. It's supposed to be a taunt. Instead, it's like an encouragement. Obviously, it's hard to find an equivalent for this, but if someone directly tells me, I'm using you to, to get to your friend, that's all you're good for. For me, it feels like the opposite of stripping me of value. You've given me value. You've like given me purpose. I'm going to make damn sure that that doesn't happen. After all we've been through, we're not fighting for our own egos anymore anyway. Not the students of UA. Damn it! Mandalay! Is Midoriya close? Haters will say he's crying because of the quirk. Genist, Mirko, Edshot, you have to protect Bakugo. Please. Also, this is not the end of Bakugo's fight. Big plans to graduate from UA. And also live. He has big plans to eat breakfast tomorrow. Oh, man. And breathe air. Her school. Well, let's face it, we were way over classes anyway. I was looking forward to our graduation ceremony. Then we'll have one. Should you be up here? I, I could just smell him. I knew he was coming. Nothing can get this kid down. Can we win this? We can at least protect everyone until we... That's not the right question. Here. So put a smile on your face. Let's show this guy the yes, power Yes, I feel the so much better. So much better. Light fades to rain. This is the wrong title. Unless rain is a good thing. My heart becomes the sun. My heart melts into butter. Well, at least I didn't have to wait long from intro spoiler to reveal. But yeah, it's sort of obvious. You see those two. He can't be far off. It's almost like they intentionally withhold him because of how big of an impact he has and how cool he is. It just plays on the whole psychological thing of scarcity. But he's so absent from the show despite being so amazing that <laughs> you're like, wow, Mirio showed up? As if there's a chance he wouldn't show up for the fight for humanity's existence. It's kind of a good thing my quirks aren't working. Shut your Otherwise, it'd be too easy. He'll arrive to find your corpse instead of a pile of dust. Uh, that boy got so angry when I skewered you last time. He noticed. No matter how high you attempt to fly, you'll always be garbage compared to one for all. Uh, it's funny, like, even without seeing it, the show has changed the way I think about things. Watching myself watch the show, if that makes sense, it's changed my immediate reaction to things. You know, maybe in this story, whatever, Bakugo actually is upset by an insinuation like that. Like, oh, the odds are just stacked against me from the beginning. But just in the context of the show, I can't hear that without thinking, well, I'm going to prove you wrong. Or just overall taking what seems like a negative, maybe even feeling it for a second or two. I mean, like, it does have some weight, right? You can understand the pain of the idea that you never can be what you want through some intrinsic property of yourself and how you were born or whatever. That's scary. But then that's where it stays. It doesn't enter. It doesn't become a building block of belief. It's just, well, now you know what? I'll figure that out for myself. I'm gonna work harder now because you said that, you know? And it will be a process. But like, I'll be damn sure I won't be caught not doing my part or making excuses or blaming other people or not pushing myself to the absolute limit I can push myself to. Though, admittedly, it's much harder for yourself than it is when you're an observer for someone you respect. Like, I respect Bakugo. Okay. Well, they're here. I can't wait to see what Mira can do. Best hybrid. And also scared to see, scared to see this. Venom. That looked pretty great. That looks pretty great for someone who can't use his quirks. Oh, just his, his arm mouth spit it out, of course. You'll be dead in no time. Yeah, I mean, that Don't is a concern. Stronger? Baku just being dragged around. I mean, yeah, Mirio, obviously, the trump card here. Heads up, Janus! All these hands and you can't touch me. Yeah, there you go. One their pawns. We met in <laughs> Another one of your pawns. Their pawns. <laughs> Imagine. Oh, you're clearly wrong and terrible. My job's to intercept any villains other than you who try to crash the fight, and to make sure information's flowing smoothly between all parts of the arena. It's a perfect gig for me since I get around so fast. That is a vast underutilage of his powers. <laughs> Communication? What is he passing notes? With all he can do? He's the perfect fit for this fight. Speaking of things being stacked, more than Deku, I would argue. They really put him on information duty? I'm a little bit upset. Maybe Hero Society deserves to fall. Why are you so destructive? I don't like our current they have so they have such opposite personalities too. 
Right, it's society. Society. You're upset because you've never had any friends. <laughs> oh, that struck surprisingly close to home, didn't it? I'll bring Hado's energy with me and serve it up right in his face. <laughs> you had people you cared okay. about. You'd see things differently. Well, he does have people he cares about in his way, but he sort of lost that. There are a million that. things in this world you shouldn't destroy. There are a million things. Gotta keep him busy. You're also underestimating yourself. Finish him off. Maybe I'm just fanboying a little bit too hard. I apologize for nothing. The million, the kind of guy to defeat Shigaraki accidentally and then feel bad for not doing his job sending messages or whatever it was. Whoever made that strategic decision needs to be fired and or is a villain. There's another insider. Quickly, we're still in dire need of your firepower. It's okay. Let it's okay. First aid. We can handle the rest it's a lot. This is not defeat. This is not breaking. Rest now. Right side. I, he's, I don't think he's done. Oh, oh, he sees it. He sees something. Let, let him go. No, he's badly injured. Uh, this is tough if you're best genius. I, I get it. Yet. He's in a zone right now. I can feel it. When I saw those tears, I know like it's not sadness. Something broke, but like in a good way. Some barrier was unleashed. And I think Shigaraki did that accidentally because Shigaraki underestimating what makes them great because he himself doesn't possess it. What he has is just like raw power. The taunts that he leveled on Bakugo are things that would have destroyed Shigaraki <laughs> in that position, you know? You did have friends. There's no way you'd be doing this. You'd want to protect them. Destruction would be the last thing on your mind. Mirror the kind of guy to be Shigaraki's friend. Friends? Oh, there he is. I've got friends. Huh? Name one. I was really nice, and Moon always barks to go on walks with me. So there, you've got no idea what you're talking about. What? You don't know me. You almost did. You had friends. He had friends. Where are they right now? Oops. Sorry. You're accidentally just destroying him psychologically. Sounds like I must have brought up a sensitive subject. Yeah, you did bring up a sensitive subject, Mirio. His body was complete. So why do I feel a schism? Tomura and I are supposed to be fully combined. No delineation. Wow. Wow. That's amazing. Tomura and I. No delineation, you say. Also, that's a bizarre regression. I'm correct in the idea that that was just straight out of his childhood psyche. That's so funny. Mira comes in with the whole, maybe you're just lonely. <laughs> and Jigaraki just defeated. Anyone have that experience where someone just picks the exact right speech option against you and you're defeated instantly. I have this random moment that I still think about from high school, as crazy as that is. Long story short, when I was in high school, I did this internship for a sole proprietor who sold textiles with one other intern, and I was not doing a good job. I mean, it was just, generally speaking, a very incompetent stage of my life. And one day I had a very open clash with her, and we were fiercely arguing and debating, and then she said, just out of nowhere, I think you have some issues with authority because of your relationship with your father, and I think you should address that. And I was completely defeated. <laughs> like, just annihilated in an argument. What was amazing about it was I'd never ever talked about my relationship with my family with her. That was my last day of that job, but <laughs> I thought about that conversation for the rest of my life. Maybe you're just lonely, Shigaraki. Maybe you missed your quirky. Also, it's such a sad, cute answer as a kid. Like, I have friends, like my dog. I can't let this go on. It's happening to both of them at the same time. For different reasons. I think I touched a nerve back there. He wavered just a little. And keep it going with the loneliness thing. What I'm really doing is buying time for you, Tamaki. Believe in his friends, not hogging the spotlight. Come on, do your worst. Oh. You designed your own coffins. It's time to lie down and close the lid. <laughs> Yeah, okay, back up a little bit. Oh god. Wow. She is not backing down. How do you get from this to nut job? It's a lot of steps. Just because you've got a quirk that can do anything doesn't mean you have the right to look down on the rest of us. Where did you get go from this to looking down? That's a lot of steps, bro. You're terrible. The more they withdrew and avoided me. Until yeah, jokes on all of you, I grew up hot. <laughs> I bet some of those kids came around later. They talk about it. They're like, you know who I went to school with? And deep down it hurts them because they know they mean nothing to her now. The ultimate revenge that she doesn't even care about because she's too nice to. But it's cool how intuitive their friendship is. Like, I'm going to keep being really shy. Need someone like Nedjure. <laughs> Assuming that it comes from a good place and there's warmth, which Nedjure obviously is very warm. Mirio are just a bundle of love and sunshine and will match her energy. I can't understand how painful that might feel as a kid though, because you don't understand that just... Kids are terrible. They're not even humans yet. They're just parroting things that they hear from their 
parents and guardians who, you know, are also on that scale of parent, just hopefully a little bit further along, to have something genuinely beautiful about you and inquisitive and natural and energetic and have that be punished because it's different. Come to think of it, that's Toga, right? It's a lot of the villains. This is something like an endless debate for me, where I know where I stand, but I can't fully put it into a concrete word or principle. The question to, to what extent our development and growth comes down to free will or just luck. And I want to maximize the free will argument. I think it's important to take more responsibility or take as much responsibility as is possible, even if it's a little bit farther than the truth, because it's maybe only by doing so that you capture the fullness of what that is. Nevertheless, just realistically speaking and thinking very directly in my own life, there are some things I can't deny that influenced me that I didn't really see or foresee, didn't really choose. And one of those big things is my influences. Like I really wonder, or I should say I'm really grateful for, a few very, very key friendships I had at, a, at an important age. I mean, who knows for sure, right? But I can imagine my life going in wildly different trajectories, starting from th that point in the timeline. I think that's probably where this is going. And I'm sure in my hercademia, I think we've seen concretely that who someone has, who comes along at the right moment, plays an enormous role on their career track, so to speak. And that does make it seem more like a luck thing. But I think there's also a free will argument in there, which is that if you get it, once you see it, your actions become more important. And if you start seeing things as a network and start seeing your role as something that even if it's not glamorous, even if it's not at the scale of, of things you see in TV and shows and movies, it's nevertheless a heroic struggle to do your best to be the best you can be, to have that filter I was talking about where like you can understand villainous things. You just don't let them in. You don't let them become a part of you. You take the, the maximally great outlook as much as you can, as hard as that is, time and time again. You will end up like contributing to this very thing. And maybe you didn't have that at a certain point, but you can have that eventually. It's a little bit too much to ask of yourself to have been born with that knowledge. But nevertheless, once you hear it, that's sort of the big bang of free will and you have it now. And that's both a real gift and a real curse, but that's the beginning of like the kind of greatness that I think is universally understood and loved about the show. Heroes? Did he make the first move? Wow. Do you have any favorite pros or- <laughs> Aww. He was, he was his friend's hero that day. Uh, yes, thumbs up or just a reflex? Well, Mirio said- Are you okay? Should you be sweating and shaking so badly? How strange! Oh, this is makes me more anxious. <laughs> Don't do that. Don't call attention to my anxiety. That's how I got to know both of you. How our friendship started to bloom. Interesting choice for that <laughs> flashback. Part of the beauty of their friendship also is- I know what vast hybrid can do. It takes some time Hard to even activate, express her words. But Togata and I know you, Tamaki Amajiki. You can do this! It's this. We're really cooking now. <laughs> if there's one Love eater. Here who might be able to damage Shigaraki, it's you using your quirk without holding back! Yeah, it's this. Up until now, I haven't been able to accept them. Because the way there. such words might have crushed me. Oh god, I know that feeling. It was so much easier to be self-deprecating instead. Right. Now the weight of your words is making me stronger hard, yeah, than Yeah, it's really hard to open your heart to that. That's hybrid. It looks really cool too. <laughs> Whoa. Why can't you understand? We don't care about your <laughs> your journey. <laughs> See, that's not quirk tears. That's real tears. How could you see that and not have tears? I mean, it was never gonna do it completely. No, it definitely did something. You also, we need Bako to step in again. <laughs> I don't see any failure here. That's such a moving scene. It's really cool too, because I just said the knowledge of that power is both a blessing and a curse. This took me a while to understand because you watch Tales of Heroism and it just feels universally good. Maybe even part of you envies it, right? But what I think is not easily understood is that actually the villains with all their tragic backstories have it much easier than the heroes. The heroes are the ones who are doing difficult work. Anybody can be destroyed by life. Anyone can be negative. It's really not that deep. It's not difficult. Answering to a golden ideal way higher than your current state at these near impossible godlike levels every day, all your life, that's difficult. That is the most difficult thing. Being sad, being hateful, resentment, those are natural. I think for most people, that's just water flowing downhill. It feels like work and it's energy spent for sure, but it's really not anything. Like Shigaraki having the power to destroy things and then destroying things, you know, whatever. I can destroy things too. Making something good is way harder. I mean, examples abound in life. It's very easy to straw man an argument. It's very hard to strong man an argument. I mean, to push it all the way to its extreme, I think that's partly what the heroic sacrifice means. In shows, literally, it's like, I'm dying for the cause, right? That's conceivable in real life too, in extreme situations. But I think for the average person, it's more like, you really will have to sacrifice everything about yourself. You have to sacrifice your ego. You have to sacrifice your sense of self that thinks you're great already. The things you think you know, the positions you take and fight for, for comfort and a sense of security about the world. You would have to be completely broken down 
down and stripped of all your tools, and then build from there. A death and rebirth. I've got to defeat him. I got mixed feelings, like best genist. But he sees something. I guess have just have faith. His mind was working in overdrive as he cried. I mean, you can still support it. You're gonna take turns now, though maybe that would get in his way. His palms secrete a nitroglycerin like sweat he can detonate to create powerful blasts. How well do his tears detonate? I'm not crying, I'm sweating out of my eyes. Why is he pissing me off so much? He doesn't have one for all. There's something that you don't understand yet. I'll obliterate you! Ironically, it's a very Bakugo like thing to say. Whenever I finally got to meet you, I was, uh, I was kind of a punk. <laughs> oh, kind of. Man. I think I was so happy for him that he got the card. You have no idea how much I wanted your autograph. Oh, I mean, you got so much more, though. Oh. No, he's, that doesn't look great. Oh, he's intact. His body is intact. He just got ragdolled again. The card kind of hurt. Kanto, Chubu, and Kansai regions are experiencing unexpected temperature spikes. Oh, what a cutaway. Cut away from Bakugo's almost death to the weather. Hang in there. This might hurt, but you'll be... Uh... <gasps> His heart. Let's try anyway. Try anyway. Do what you gotta do. There's no way. I don't believe it. I can't feel upset because I don't believe it. Wow. Oh, imagine Deku showing up to this. He better survive because, you know, besides the obvious and me liking him. I don't want Best Genius to live with that guilt. Not that anything could have stopped him. Not that he didn't go into that knowingly. Actually, last episode, I was wondering if there wasn't some deliberate setting up and comparison between Endeavor and Bakugo. Because in a way, Bakugo is to Deku what Endeavor is to All Might. They're both fire and they both had very similar moments. But although Endeavor seemed to get the majority of the discussion, at least that I saw, I thought Bakugo section last episode being solidified here was more compelling. Because because Bakugo's felt similar to Endeavor's, but a little bit more complete. You know, it's like Endeavor's what drives me is just hate for myself and using this negative emotion to fuel me forever towards something. I mean, like I said, I think that's amazing, but it doesn't feel like the ultimate. To be as great as Endeavor, to take these horrible things, even self-hatred, and to turn it into energy as service to others. It's amazing. It still felt incomplete. And I was also wondering if that wasn't manifested and compared and contrasted between the two of them by their common rationale. Endeavor was nearly destroying his comrades with collateral damage, and Bakugo was very careful to pick his target, not to destroy structures. Endeavor was just very pure emotion. This huge outburst, Bakugo was a little bit more precise. I mean, it really doesn't matter if it's deliberate or not. I think the important thing is Bakugo's reflection of, oh yeah, you know, I had those negative emotions once <laughs> and I took them to their logical extreme and I realized there's something more important. It felt better to me than Endeavor's. I'll always be this burning fire of self-hatred and rage. I mean, to that point, I actually think that will come up again for Endeavor in more clarity. Speaking of death and rebirth, that seems to be Bakugo this episode. The whole like, will I ever catch up to you? Like I was saying about the conception of the characters. If you take the highest form of it, it's not the right question. Will you match your own ideal? Will you use your pain or, you know, things like envy, hatred, jealousy as an excuse to not hit your best, to not strive, to stay where you are, to justify? And Bakugo hasn't and he won't. This episode is just so great. So many things happening. I just love the friendship of the big three. I love them all as individuals. I love them even more together. Imagine the graduation party they'll have when this is all over. It will be, well, I hesitate to say this because of how crazy this would be. It might even be better than the school festival. 